warrior and fetch me a worthy wedding gift, the king said, by killing a great monster. I knew it! Shh, I knew it too. Perseus figured out what he needed. The golden fleece of the winged ram, said to be guarded by a monster who could turn any to stone. Luckily, Perseus was blessed by the gods, and he was guided by Athena's golden-geared owl to the monster's lair. Athena's golden owl? That's dumb. Sounds cute. I want one. And armed with the vorpal sword from mighty Olethros, he faced the snake-necked, large-headed, shaggy-maned, stony-gazed Katovlebas. No! Huh? Perseus avoided the Katovlepas' killing gaze and snicked the sword, lopping off the creature's head. Ew! He grabbed the golden fleece and wrapped the Katovlepas' head in it, then flew back home astride winged Pegasus to save Andromeda, who was about to be eaten by the Kraken. He used the deadly head to turn the Kraken to stone. Wait! The what? What's a Kraken? Head. Like a giant squid? Don't you mean the sea monster Ketos? <laughs> Pretty sure Homer said, release the Kraken, not release the Ketos. You just made that up. That was not all. Hades appears with a pack of giant scorpions called Scorpiox and kills Andromeda and tries to kill Perseus. Huh? Perseus throws his sword of Zeus at Hades, forcing him back into the underworld. Wait, wait. It's supposed to be Hermes' sickle, and Andromeda doesn't die. You're telling it wrong! Uh, in the end, Perseus wins. Zeus offers to make him a god, but Perseus refuses, so instead Zeus brings Andromeda back to life because she was only mostly dead. Wow, that was so wrong and so boring. You are a stinky storyteller, and that story was poop! I am sorry for your audience, Evil Bearer. Though from what I heard, it did sound like you deviated somewhat from the traditional tale. Ah, uh, apologies.